All right, off we go. Um, I'm going to talk about random walks today. So this is going to be the first of four major pieces on power law, make power law size distribution mechanisms, right? And again, heavy tail distributions are everywhere in the world. They're not all power law size distributions, just to say that again. But we will focus on them. They are incredibly important. And I'll give you four very disparate mechanisms for why they come about. Maybe five, six. Anyway. We'll see. Uh, this is just to add, you know, I know we ended with a few examples of allo taxonometry, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you some more now and then. But this is sitting on, there's a website for it, right? So, which you've accessed for the um, assignment, I would hope that's for the code, which has been updated a little bit to work for, just a touch to work for um, the latest version of MATLAB, just a small tweak. Okay, so. Lots of things you can compare. This is the total number of points scored by a player in the NBA going from year to year. And this is a, a GIF. Yes, it's a GIF. It's actually just a little video thing, but it's um, sitting underneath that. It's a nice little object. So it's just going to loop through and start again. And so you can concentrate on different places. So again, these are new players. These are... Um, uh, rookies, right? They're coming in. So Steph Curry's there, Blake Griffin. You can see when they first appear because they didn't score on this. They had no score on the previous year. It's also people coming back from injury, right? Who, who spent a long time out, uh, maybe a whole year out. DeMarcus Cousins is an example of that. So, well, maybe that was his first year, actually. Uh, anyway, so that's what happens here. These are people who leave maybe through injury or, or you know, retiring. And then You'll see it's a pretty good, right? There's some kind of, of this turbulence here. And at the top are people who are, you know, dominating, right? So Kevin Durant is number one, number one, number one is staying in that position. James Harden comes up, right? So you see there's sort of a main few characters at the top. Not all of you have to be basketball fans. It doesn't really matter, right? But this is just yet another example of how we could kind of explore these, an ensemble of um, time series. That where we have types, right? We have names attached to each time series. There are about four or 500 players. This is about, about 500, I think. This is a, about the limit of, you know, smaller than this, it starts to get a little thin. Anyway, there are lots of other examples. We've got all the Harry Potter books, um, causes of death in Hong Kong. There's just a lot of different examples. It's kind of super, super overkill. <laughs> The paper is really a beast. Okay. All right. I just wanted to pop that up. And that is a little hog of a thing, so it can stop. Okay. All right. So let's just go for this. Let's talk about this. I would have normally been here before, but, um, well, there's more material this year again. So, all right. So power loss. Is just, so this is over time has become, you know, one, two, three, four, and I'll, I'll sort of broken down into small small pieces. Um, I might not tell you about all the second part here, but it's gonna be about random walks. All right, so random walks. So we'll talk about random walks, just very simple random walks. Right? This is a classic um, thing to, to think about in, in math. It has lots of implications um, for reality because randomness, is, the structure and randomness are the, the sort of two big components of everything. There's recent work in some sort of a, uh, dynamical system stuff that suggests that that's in fact the case. It's really just noise and mechanism. And in fact, that's that's one of those things where physicists are like, yes, that's kind of how we thought about it forever, right? And a way to attack a problem is to find all the randomness, get that off, and then you've got the structure, or to sort of build up the structure the other way and add, right? You know, so there are different ways to think about it. But often, if you can characterize the randomness, that's fine, right? That's That's a good thing to then strip off and understand why it came about. Uh, just, I'm sorry, I have to do this. I think the cat is always there. He thinks there's food. All right, okay, very good. So, um, it's a Monty Python reference, um, and I can't do it. I've got a sore neck. Anyway, so, uh, Oh uh, yeah, before tarot cards, I had postcards. So um, I, I was kind of exploring that. There'd be a map of places you've, you've visited. And so this is where we're going, right? Well, we, we'll first visit this, and then, but then we'll find um, this kind of place, right? So lots of little boring mountains, but then there's 
Yeah. Okay. So these are mountains most of the time. I think I have some even uh, more ridiculous postcards for that. But anyway, okay. They just exist. So we get structure out of randomness, right? I mean, there is the whole big bang and then gravity form, forms these balls. Some of them are very hot and then there are little small balls around them and they do the spinny thing. And, but there's a lot of just mess and somehow, you know, uh, structures emerge out of that. And this is not just that part, but of course, you know, just daily thinking, you know, thinking sort of strange things and coming up with a new idea of, and, you know, of how to wash the dishes or how to, you know, the solution to some math problem. There's a lot of randomness that we, we um, kind of enjoy and, can, and profit from. And we'll see that kind of played out over and over again. That randomness is a really important piece. So random walks, right? And we'll just have this very simple one. And I'll just go just introduce it, but it will turn out to have some very rich behaviors that I think are quite surprising. So, uh, so time and space are discrete. So there's a clock, tick, tick, tick. You know, this is all, you can generalize all these things however you want. There's just one spatial dimension. So if you imagine these little terrible carpet things, this, this is a grid that we live on, right? So it's just a two dimensional grid. And so I can walk from point to point and I only exist at those, I got a clock, Clock. And if it's a random walk, right? Random randomness is hard for us to, uh, you know, if you get right, I won't do it. But there's a classic um, little sort of joke in statistics, of course, as we've seen, statistics professors don't understand probability either. But you get people to write out a um, zero and one, I flip a coin a hundred times, and that's a homework thing. So go home, flip a coin a hundred times, and then give me heads and tails, right? Just write it down like that. And then you can just look at the paper and say, you, you made this up, or you actually did it, or you made this up, or you actually did it, because people reliably will not put five or six heads or tails in a row, which will, will appear in, in 100, right? It just seems wrong. So if you're trying to write them out yourself, you have to start flipping. So we're bad random number generators. Uh, anyway, it's a little trick. Our relationship is is difficult. So we're gonna have a random, we're gonna have a zombie texter. In the past, this would always be a drunk person. You will see this in books. I'm trying to move away from that kind of thing. Um, anyway, so this is a definitely a problem of of. But we'll make him a zombie as well. Why not? But they're well because they're texting. So they're just wandering around, going. There's just one dimension they live on, one long long street, and they're just wandering around. All right. And they're going to start at this origin x equals zero. Yeah, the drunk thing. So for a while, there was a nearby town in Australia where I grew up that had the highest drinking per capita in Australia, which is a pretty big achievement. Um, I played cricket against them, against them as like a 12-year-old kid, like the, you know, one of the extra little kids on the uh, ends of a big you know, men's team that would happen as, as uh, increasingly as rural areas emptied out. Um, but I remember they all went, at lunch to the pub. It's where I first heard the term gout. Anyway, Dar Darwin reclaimed it, which is almost, which is even more impressive because of large numbers, right? So, but they use beer as Gatorade. Um, electrolytes, sugars. Okay, so, um, so we're going to have uh, a very simple thing. So just plus one or minus one, right? So plus one, minus one. Let's make that positive. This is negative. Going to start at zero. We'll call it zero. Plus one. Minus one. And the probability is to flip a coin. So we're going to flip a coin. So we'll call this little thing epsilon t. And here are just some examples, right? So just, this is just some examples where we're adding them up of, as we're going along, right? So the, the base one will be just plus one or minus one. So we just have like a little sequence like this. And this is adding them up. And just, it's, just take these in a little bit. They look like real things, right? This could be you know, Bitcoin or something, right? There are no sharp drops. They can't produce that. And that's a real feature of, of many real systems. Um, <clears throat> like the probability your, your, your team is going to win, which is a feature on ESPN. You know, it might have this sort of stuff, but then someone scores a touchdown or whatever, and it goes, whoop. And towards the end of those games, they go, whoop, whoop. Which people in POCs have studied. Um, and we've studied, yeah, okay. So... This is just a couple of examples. And if you imagine that, you know, you're winning money based on this, then, and, and so positive this way. So this is, this is this dimension here, right? Wrapped like this. So you're randomly moving around and you're, you're leaving, you know, you're going away from the origin, sometimes coming back, right? 
almost came back. So you imagine this is the, your opponent winning. It's pretty bleak. You flick, the, you, you know, 8,000 flips of the coin. It's getting a little, it's not working very well anymore. You're trying to use your feet, you know, like, but you're desperate. And you're, and now you're back in front. This person, of course, is, you know, devastated. Uh, you know, here you think you're a hero, right? So you, the story you can put on top of it is pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, you can just give people random walks and add a narrative to it, which we'll come back to. Uh, we'll come back to that. So this one, lots of little returns, right? This looks like an evenly sort of fought contest. You know, there's a sad time here for player number one. It's back and then it looks like they're in trouble again. Just flipping coins. Just a few more examples. Right, so there's a roughness, which is a technical term actually, and we can talk about that, but uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Right, so nothing extreme is happening. It's 10,000 coin flips. The, the, and just to put the sort of uh, uh, bounds on this, right, this is 2,000 coin flips here. The, the envelope for this is, is quite steep, right? So maybe this is, you know, 300 is here. This, this is, it's kind of here, right? So this is if you've got head, 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 head all the way up, right? There's a linear progression that way and a linear progression that way. So it's not even coming close to that. It's in Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, I think there's a sequence where, right? Yeah. Um, we should just watch that on Tuesday. Okay, so, uh, I, so these are just, these. I'm just sort of putting them in front of you so you can just get a sense of how they, and of course we could run them, you could run them. And there was a point, I believe, in Las Vegas where it went from, so you had the uh, one arm bandit, right? So you had to, you know, you pull the thing. Um, then it became just a button. It wasn't really, it was just a button. And then I think they, they get to a point where you push a button and you just stand back and this happened while your credit card is uh, attached. God knows what's happening there. All right. Okay, so what we're looking at is displacement after t time steps. So this is a simple thing to add up, right? So we're just going to add up all these random, this is our new random variable. We're just summing random variables. All right, statistics being used well. So the average that we expect for this, so we're just going to build a story. This is very simple things to start with. The average displacement, it's the average of the sum, which is the sum of the averages. They're all independent, right? There are no, it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. The only thing that matters in the past is Right, so we're over here, like six steps away from the origin. You flip a coin again, right? It matters that I'm here, but the plus or minus one is independent. So we're trying, you know, we're getting structure from the simplest possible thing, but we have to have this very, very simple notion of memory, right? It matters where we were before. You know, memory and structure and random, these are all good words to kind of have. Okay, so the average, of course, of one coin flip is plus one or minus one is zero, right? You never actually go zero distance, but on average, that's what you do, all right? So this is what we expect for all of these time series. You know, if we were sort of laying bets on this and thinking about this, you know, what, where do you expect this to be? We, you expect it to be here at any time point. There's a little detail, which is the even or odd numbers, right? So you have to have an even number of steps to get back to the origin. And you have an odd number of steps. You can only be plus or minus one from the origin. So that's a little detail. It will matter technically. Uh, and it's something to think about. All right. So we expect our zombie texter, who's having a great time, talking about really important things like cats. Um, and then, yes, as I said, OK. So what happens, you know? Um, as, as we go on, a chance of, of returning to the origin. It feels like, you know, these games, right? They, they start even, of course, this one the whole way. I mean, this is, this is 10,000 steps and it's just getting bleaker. You know, this is bad, right? Um, there's a little break here, you know? This one, they're holding on, but we sort of have this sense that eventually this thing is gonna wander away. That's, I mean, well, I'm, I'm putting that on you. I'm not sure what you think. So we can sum the variances. This is a good reason for using variances. Uh, so we're just going to do that. It's a simple thing. Uh, so the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. And the variance is 1 um, for this thing, right? So it's a half times 1 squared plus a half times minus 1 squared. Um, that's the uh, second moment. The 
first moment is zero because it's just the mean. Add those things up, half times one, half times one, it's one. So that's this, the vari this variance of standard deviation is also one for just this little plus or minus one thing. And then we're just going to add them up. So the sum of i equals one to t of one, an important kind of sum, is what is that? T, right? So it's just one plus one plus one. So our variance is going up. All right. So what does that mean? So it's T. And then the standard deviation then is T to the half. And so this appears in nature a lot in, in different ways. But this is a really fundamental um, observation. So the standard deviation is growing like the square root of T. And I said at the start that the, right, if we just had heads, all heads being flipped because, you know, you're in some miraculous universe. I mean, it's incredibly improbable, right? Or, or it's being gained, or, or tails. Then you know you've got this linear trend. So that's you know that's that's plus t and that's minus t. But the envelope is going to be square root of t, which is much slower. So this is just a simple little scaling law that's popped out, random walks. We, you know, it didn't take too far, but it's a very nice little one. And it's it's sometimes when you're looking at time series and you look you see a t to the half. For whatever's you know the variable this way, you're like, oh, that's a random walk. If it, and we'll talk about it later. If that, if you find it with a power greater or smaller, you talk about super or, or super linear, super diff, sub diffusive behavior or super diffusive behavior. And we'll, we'll get to that. The last one in ten thousand uh, dollars. Now he gets that over. He gets that one over. That has never happened before, incidentally. That was an historic So that's not going to happen in our model, right? right? This is an exciting time for these people. But um, Plinko. So Plinko is, you know, right? It's the Price is Right, which I'm sure you watch every day. But it's it's a classic. There was a kid's game version that I had as a little, like a little plastic version. And you, the ball, you know, you drop the ball down or you'd spin around there and you'd watch how it would fall down. Um, Bean machine, the quincunx, that's a Latin word. There's the simulations, the Galton box, Galton, bad person. Um, but this is this is a, a you know classic random walk thing in principle because there's this little triangular lattice here, and it's gonna and I have a few more examples, I think, but it's gonna hit a rod and either go one way or the other, maybe, right? Okay, so let's yeah, you know, depending on how well it works. And what's the money in here? The last one in ten thousand. Hard to see, I realize. Uh, yeah, so now right? he gets that over. big money is here. Which he you gets that, that one over. That has never happened before. Situation. Okay. So we're going to count random walks. So each specific walk, right? There's a half a chance it goes this way, half a chance it goes this way, or half half this way. So it's going to be one over two, two to the power of t. So it's different. We're going to have to think about different things here one is the specific walk the actual walk right that's that's going to be heads tails tails like it's actually got this sequence the chance of that happening that specific walk is one divided but so it's a half for each choice to the power of t now walks that end up at the same place that's a different problem right so that's going to be a change for us right so we get that's what we're interested in how many walks end up in the same place at you know after time t and so we'll need a few little, it's a little combinatorics things, and then um, you, we'll have to deal with factorials, which is Sterling's approximation, basically. So there's just some little games we'll have to play here. So the number of distinct walks that start at i and end at j, right? So this, this could be i, and j is over here. And we take, you know, a thousand time steps. We're saying, let's say i is three and j is five. We're interested in how many times after a thousand times, you know, flips of a coin are we here, which isn't very far away. Um, but we want to have a general rule for i and j. Uh, so what's happening is we're, we're, of course, just moving j minus i steps, right? So it doesn't matter where you start. The i doesn't, shouldn't matter. It just is the displacement. So this is a plus two. And it's not assignment four, but um, you will figure out that it's this. It's t choose this object here. So this is t plus j minus 1 divided by 2. Uh, it has to be, so again, that's the displacement. You'll figure this out. Uh, there's a divided by 2 because we, this has to be an even number. Otherwise, you can't make it to that, that place. All right. So a little formula to get to. We'll work through that 
That's fine. But it is just a, it's just a, you know, not a terrible looking binomial thing, right? So binomials will feature a fair amount. All right. So we're going to do this 2n thing, as I said, even an odd, some little fixes for that. So what's the probability of where x is after you know, a large amount of time? We know that the standard deviation is growing like the square root of t, and the, and the mean is 0, so that's going to help. So um, we know that we have an even number after 2n. So instead, we're going to have 2n time steps. And after 2n, we're going to say we're, we're at 2k. Right? Just changing things into straight into integers. Um, and plugging things into a previous expression, we'll get the probability that, that after um, 2n time steps, we're at 2k. And k could be negative. It's 2n, choose n plus k. <clears throat> yeah. So k is, so we're going to just change things a little bit. So after time t, we're going to say that we're going to make it clear that it's an even number. Yeah. So we're going to make that clear it's an even number. So n is 0, 1, 2, 3, which means we um, have time. <clears throat> we're looking at time 0, 2, 4, 6. And after that much time, then we can only be at 0, or plus or minus 2, or plus or minus 4, or plus or minus 2n. And that's when we've, it's all been heads or all been tails. Right? These are the extremes. So you can't, so we're just saying, let's just think about the even time steps. And that also adds that we can only be at even numbers on, on this, um, this growing uh, set of spaces that this little zombie text walker can be at. So uh, another way to think about this is as 2n. I know it's hard to see if I do that. Will this come back up? Yeah, so it's just, um, what do I say? Let's see if this works. Uh, 2n, n plus k, right? So this is 2n factorial over n plus k factorial. And then it's true that it's 2n minus k factorial. This is the definition of a, right? So just in general, like um, n choose k is n factorial over k factorial minus k factorial. And so this is 2n factorial on the top. There's an n plus k factorial on the bottom. And then an, these things cancel, and then we'll get an n. Um, that's an n plus k, the n minus k factorial here. Oh, I think I have to wear glasses. I'm going to do that, which I'm sure will fog up completely. All right, um, okay, so we've got this object. So this is saying we're going to take 2n time steps and think of these as plus 1s, and these are minus 1s. So um, n plus k times minus 1, right? These are steps, plus, and then we took a smaller amount of these. Um, these are plus 1s. These are minus 1s. So that gives us n plus k. So this is displacement um, equals this. So we've got n plus k and then um, minus n minus k. So these things cancel and we get 2k. Okay, so you know you could figure this out in different ways, but the point is there are different ways to arrange it. You could have you could have n plus k plus ones and then n minus k minus ones, or you could just write or you know heads and tails, or you could have them arranged in all these other different ways, right? Just shuffled around. So there are lots of ways, as long as you have whatever it is, say seven heads and three tails, the tails can appear anywhere in those ten flips. And we have to think about that. That's what the combinatorial is giving us. <laughs> now this is just so this is 
you know, the basis of this distribution. It's this binomial. Um, this is really our time thing. This is our x. And if you play around with that, you get this, that the, this, the big reveal is that this probability distribution tends to the normal distribution. Obviously, it's discrete, right? We're only talking about the even numbers, so it's still, you know, that doesn't ever go away. But if we smooth it out and try to put a thing over it, and we were careful about some details, we get the, the normal distribution. So there are lots of ways to derive the normal distribution, and some are more profound than others, perhaps. But this is one that just comes, so random walks give us the normal distribution. And you may have seen this in different ways, right? So diffu this is diffusion. This is sort of this big story from physicists that everything's going to end up in soup, except for gravity. Gravity is the big thing that gets rid of the, that old entropy problem. Um, <clears throat> because we're all here in a little team on our ball. Um, <clears throat> so there are some really important pieces in here, right? It's e to the minus x squared. And this is the this is the form of a normal distribution. This is sigma squared here, and sigma um, the square root of t here is sigma here as well. So that's exactly our standard deviation was the square root of t. Right, this is a two sigma squared. So um, sigma is the square root of t, and that square root goes across here, square root of t. There's a pi because pi likes to just be involved with everything, but it's a one of the great integral joys is the integral of e to the minus x squared gives you that thing. So gamma function, fun times. Um, okay, so you'll get that. It's a it's a fantastic thing to to prove, right? Normal distributions everywhere. It's often not derived. You know, you might not come across it. So this is within our context a, a fun way to fun. <clears throat> a, um, it it arises naturally. Okay. So what does this mean? And, and then it's a good example of like, the, you know, there's no normal distribution sitting in these little plus or minus ones, it's just coins, right? But we get this rather spectacular mathematical structure. Um, you know, that we, this is, you know, it's an exact thing. This is really true, um, the central limit theorem. Uh, it, it is technically a bit difficult to deal with, right? So the, um, um, <clears throat> that limits, you know, so that's why there were table, you know, before computers, they were just, books with tables and tables and tables, and you have to look things up. Okay, so I'll just mention stable distributions here. This is a very special stable distribution uh, example. So if you take a variable that's normally distributed, another variable that's normally distributed, and you add them together, you get another one that's normally distributed, right? The means add and the variance is add. There is a parameter that goes from, I think, zero to two that encompasses this, but also gives this whole other family of stable distributions that have that same property, right? Got a variable X, variable Y, distributed the same way, add them together, you get something that's also distributed in that same functional form. And all of those have power law tails, right? So there's a inverse Gaussian, um, uh, is it the Laplace distribution, is a one over X one. It's a whole family of things. This has misled people a little bit to say, oh, this is where how laws come from. It's not mechanistic, but it is a truly beautiful thing. So this is a picture of what's going on. We've got an example random walk in here. And uh, this is where all of the, if we took all of the random walks and hit, you know, made a histogram and smoothed it out, we'd have this Gaussian for this point in time. The Gaussian then starts to just spread. Of course, it has these hard edges here, right? There's a this envelope of all heads or all tails, that, that stops it. It isn't e to the minus x squared forever, and it's a histogram, blah, blah, blah. But it is you know, going towards that limit, and it's spreading out. So this is this diffusion story, right? It's spreading out, and you know, this appears every, you know, sand, well, sand piles are difficult, but like lots of things, you know, there's a diffusive activity to how they're working around. Google, you know, Google essentially kind of works like this by putting little random walkers, I mean, back in the old days, putting little walkers on a network and kind of letting them run around and see where they accumulate. Well, wouldn't that dotted line be given that it's possible for Okay, so this, okay, so through here is the mean, which is zero. And then this gives us the, um, it's a square root of t. Yeah. So this is the variance, but I've tried to indicate minus two root t and plus two root t, I should say standard deviation. So this is 
minus two sigma and plus two sigma. So this is the, for normal distributions, the kind of classic thing that was sort of identified, right? You have plus, plus minus sigma is like 61% of the distribution falls in there. I, and you can correct me, people in the audience. So uh, two plus or minus two sigma is 95%, plus or minus three sigma, I think is 99%. But that checks. So, and again, this is just a rule of thumb sort of thing that humans, you know, this 95% this confidence interval, right? You know, we use it all the time for terrible reasons. Okay. Um, or drug companies do, shall we say. So this is diffusion and it's just in one dimension, right? So you could imagine, so another way to think about these random walks is not just one random walker, right? You could have a pile of random walkers start here and they all wander around. And they start as a big stack. They're all, they can move past each other. They have a big stack and they start to kind of spread out, spread out, spread out, spread out. And the, if you look at where they are at any point in time, all these zombie text, texts. So you could do it as like, they're all there at once or you just run the simulation in parallel. Or you think about it, you know, this one and then the next one, this, bring them all together. Different ways to conceive that. Um, you're all too young, but if you ever played Lemmings, Lemmings is kind of like this. Um, so if you were to like walk that infinite amount of times, like it is just very uh, like if you do an infinite number of random walks, uh -huh. there, like the whole shape of the ball, right? Yeah, I mean it it um it's always gonna have a it's always gonna it's always truly gonna be discrete, right? So at the start they're just gonna be on a it's gonna be an infinite like a delta function. And then the next one you'll still have I mean that would be too much, right? So we get into trouble, but then there'd be, you can't do that. So let's say we've got a very large number and then it'd be, and, and we can think of um, what, okay. So the better way would be to say you have uh, a normalized thing, right? So you have a continuum of them. So there's, there's just a hundred percent are in the origin and then 50% would be here. 50% would be here. So that's a way to move to the continuum, right? Of course. And then 50% would be back at the origin because Half of these these halves would, and then a quarter will be out here, and then it keeps clocking and keeps clocking. <clears throat> this is going to connect to something else, which is this: it's Pascal's triangle. The excitement just doesn't stop. I know, right? <laughs> Let's write the binomials out, right? So the binomials are working that way as well. It's a funny way to have done it, but this is yeah Pascal's triangle, right? So there are how many how many walks are there as you go? Through? You can think of it like that. You can think of it as random walks, right? How many ways to put beans and things? Um, but it's it's the same as saying, um, you know, I have n things and and there are two types. You know, there's k of one type and m minus k of another type, and they're in a line. How many ways are there to organize that line? And that's again n choose k. And so if you have a polynomial, right, um, you know, x plus y to the 33, and you spread that out, you get an x to the 33, and then a 33x to the 32 times a y, and that 30, um, let's say 33, it's 33 choose one, right? 33 choose zero, 33 choose one, 33 choose two, and so on. So it's the same story. So you can think of your polynomial as being, you know, as kind of trickling down through this. So this, there's a ton of stuff that gets thought about here. Another good example of misnaming things, we're gonna have, a, we'll come, I really will have a little segment on that at some point, um, but it could be the Pyramid of Pingala, or Pingala? What do you call that restaurant? Do, does anyone go? Anyway, Pingala, I wanna say Pingala. Anyway, yeah, it could have been some someone else's, depending on who was, uh, got the naming rights, but as usual, it's not, uh, you know, Fibonacci's sequence is not Fibonacci's sequence, you know. <clears throat> anyway, well done, people. Uh, often it's accidental who becomes the famous person or famously gets a name attached to it. Uh, right, so it's counting, very nice. Um, and, and here's the example that I was idiotically trying to say with words. Uh, but yeah, h plus t to the power of n, right? It's a, it's a sum and n choose k, and we're going to have this n choose zero, n choose one, n choose, up to n choose n, and we go up and down the um, this one of these lines through here, or more. You know, usually it's structured like this. 
Okay. And this is heads and tails, right? So this is this is our random walk, right? Three heads, two heads and a tail. And so the organ these are distinct things, right? This sequence is different to this one, but if you're betting, you know, these matter these are the same, right? If you only matter about the total, they're the same. So these get grouped together, um, these three get grouped together, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so snormals, let's do it. So uh, this is one way of doing it, right? So we're going to have this kind of random walk story. Um, and it's got the typical excursion is t to the half, right? Here's our time. We're not going off track too much. Um, but it's a forest of forgettable events. All right, good. So, but there are a bit, so that's, so that's a profound thing. We get a, the normal distribution out. The fact that the normal distribution exists in general, the central limit theorem, this is a big, enormous deal. It's not... So it's exciting in a, in, a, in a deep way and it matters and we use it all the time, but um, certainly normal, normal distributions don't produce the kind of uh, terrifying behavior that we've seen from parallel size distributions, right? So, so what, have, what have random walks got to do with parallel size distributions? I'm sure you're asking. So let's think about this. This is probably that um, after t time steps, and this goes back to the pictures we had at the start, so a random walk has crossed the origin r time. So we've had a tie in this game, right? So what, what's a, probably after you know 10,000 time steps that we've had zero ties or one tie or two ties, right? And, and the most it could be with this 5,000 if it just heads, tail, heads, tail, heads, tail. Anyone watch some um, Squid Game? Which I... So there's a, there's a voting thing. It's not really a spoiler. There's a voting thing. And we'll talk about it later on because you shouldn't have, well, I mean, obviously this is a bad situation, but, um, you know, open voting, sequential voting like that leads to bad things. Yeah, right. Which is all of humanity because that's how everything, you know, we see what happened before we see what happened before we see what, and that's a rich get richer problem. <laughs> so my, uh, I haven't watched it all, but my, my growing conceit, I will never watch the chair. I do not want to watch the chair. I don't want to know anything about the chair, but I think I understand what the chair is about enough. But basically, they're the same story. Anyway, Netflix is just being a little cheap on the background. So the squid game and the chair, same narrative. All right. <laughs> ah, all right. So, um, <clears throat> so this is an interesting little problem, and people have thought about this because random walks are eternally interesting beguiling little objects and they definitely you know connect to failure and so on and, and like real world kind of things so you, they, they definitely matter um so we're gonna have our ten thousand crosses right so what are the chances you, you and there's another way to think about is are you gonna make a comeback if you're behind by one what's your chances of you know, you, i mean you're just one right they're just one right um so the most likely number of lead changes is zero so it's a bit Weird, right? In fact, it works like this, right? So the most likely it, it decreases, which probably makes sense, right? So it gets if if you've got if you're anchored by this fact that zero is the most likely, then you know that's more likely than you know one time one lead change, two lead changes. So this is suggestive of some bad news, just for a random walk, a, a game which is essentially a random walk, right? We're not even doing anything complicated like poker or you know like it's or, you know it's just coin flips which people will totally bet on right i mean people love yeah yeah so here's the here's the weird thing the expected time between ties is infinity right so you're you're a tie right now or another way to think of it you it's not a game you just i'm here and now i'm just going to flip a coin and move you know depending on which way Half the time I come back, right? I mean, because I could have gone this way or this way, and I'll half, there's a 50% chance in two time steps I'll be back. So, you know, you definitely can come back, but the expected amount of time on average, so that person steps away from the origin, the expected amount of time, you've got, say you've got a zillion of these, right? You've got a zillion of these zombie texts taking off. The expected, you know, and you, you, they come back in and you count how many came back in, or you've got 50% came back in two time steps, right? Okay, and you and you maybe you, you keep you, know, you collect them, right? But on the average amount of time that all of these walkers will take is infinity to get back. It's just random walks, and they're not really going very far away. Like this t to the half is not a big growth. 
Uh, if you're really excited about this, um, Fellow is, there's two volumes from Fellow that are really beautiful things, which I think traditionally physicists would point to a little more. Anyway, okay, so we're going to delve into that. Um, sometimes I bring a tie in, but actually from this paper, I realized um, that I'd been tying my a tie in correctly. Anyway, so this is a uh, 99. Um, and it's random walks now in a hexagonal lattice. It's a beautiful little paper. And it's whether, right, so you, you, start, you, have a, you have a start to the tie, and then you can go you know, left or right through the center. There are excluded kinds of walks. It becomes more complicated if your walk can't go back to where it's from. And it's pretty obvious if in one dimension, if you're not allowed to go back, you just keep walking, right? But if you say that in two dimensions, that becomes interesting. So it's called self-avoiding random walks, which mathematicians made a lot of hay out of, which is sort of to do with polymers, which is the graduate, it's all about plastic, right? Um, anyway, so you, you can start to enumerate all of them and then measure some um, funny aspects. And this has the, the kind of the notation of, you know, out of the board or into the board, the little arrowhead, right? There's an arrowhead or the um, rear end of an arrow. So, so you have left, right, in or out, and then they measured things like this. So this is like how many windings there are. Let's see. So there's a number of moves. So there's just a total number. How many come through the center? There's a balance measures. Um, you know, how much the winding measure, how much have you gone left or right? And, and then they enumerated a bunch of these and came up with, these are the, these are the long standing traditional um, uh, knots and, uh, and, you know, and then sort of posited as these other ones that, that could exist. But it's from a little tiny random walk problem. Very enjoyable. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the other ones, no, but I corrected what I was doing with the winter, yeah, which was. The, the ones that don't have range yeah, yeah. Um, they're just not. Then there's some balance to them and so on. It's like how much the thing, you know, pops up. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I went to a boarding, so I had to wear a, a tie, yeah. Um, and the big kids showed the little kids how to do it well, <laughs> if they liked it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it's kind of a funny little, little aside for you. It was in nature. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's that's a bad situation. So I, I there was a big there was a big part of my PhD thesis was river network the basins of river networks and there's sort of an old thing that that's exactly it's collisions of two random walks. An collision of two random walks, you know, like this, if we do it theoretically like this, is you subtract one from the other, it's the same problem. So the expected time is infinite if it's the yeah. <laughs> so dangerous. All right. Because you brought that up, I feel I must bring this up. Uh, Gox box. It's in. This is just fantastic. <laughs> Let us enjoy this. This is randomness. Hamster style. Um, it's trading cryptocurrency. There is the intention wheel. So the hamster will run on this and that gives which stock to trade where it ends. And then depending on whether the hamster next runs through the, the, decision, the buy tunnel or the sell tunnel, that's what happens. <laughs> and it's, it's been apparently exceeding the S&P. It's doing well. So this is Mr. Mr. Gox, I believe is the name of the, you know, Mr. Gox is on, um, on Twitter, the Gox box. That's the name of the hamster. And um, it's been, the hamster has been making money. Also, it is streamed on Twitch. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> This could end badly, but I think it's Mr. Gox. That's a little hollow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. All right. They're going to make ads. Okay. Go away. <clears throat>
but tweets daily and the tweets are um basically like what the decision was right so right this concluded office hours three orders placed disclaimer <laughs> doge it's just well we deserve it everyone deserves this we we deserve it and then there was something in here was yeah all right this could be dangerous but let's see who they're following <laughs> <laughs> there's some really magic stuff i'll stop this but um the tweet of god follows one who any guesses <laughs> fair, fair point just a couple others i mean i don't know if you'll guess this anything this is god <laughs> who does god follow <laughs> Stations possibly provided some of the best advice during the pandemic for how to behave and think and you know manage yourself amongst you know people going crazy uh but yeah it's what is it it's frozen meat products from the midwest yeah really high quality yeah yeah <laughs> that was good that was good Kanye was good that was basically right yeah nice anyway so um Twitter of God will light it up a little bit if you have not followed oh you don't have to be on Twitter I, I'm not recommending that at all but um. <clears throat> recently been tweeting things like I'm out of ideas <laughs> like <laughs> it's a bad situation <clears throat> okay so the problem of first return. So let's set this up. Um, okay. So we're going to sort of distill it. You know, we sort of had this game, but let's just start at the origin. And what's the probability that our random walker comes back for the first time after t time steps? So this is a, there's a, some little sneakiness in figuring this out. Because we've already got what's the probability that comes back if we think about the even ones? Because we have the we have this normal distribution, right? So we can figure out, we can figure out that it's the binomial. We know it's um, n choose zero, right? Or I should say, what am I saying? It's two n choose n, which means you had n plus ones and n minus ones, and that after two n time steps will bring you back to zero. And then we normalize that by the number of possible walks, which is two to the power of 2n in that case, and, and we've got it. So we know how many walks will be back at the origin, right? We've got this growing normal distribution. It's it's what's the what's the number in that middle box? But the ones that return for the first time. So we have to do something sneaky to, to get them. And then there's a question: will the zombie always come back? Right? Which if it was our drunk friend in the past, we're worried about, you know, not really worried, obviously, because we just wait for them. Um, and then what about higher dimensions, right? What about on networks? What about, yeah, so two dimensions, th three dimensions. And, and just, a, I'll say it again, but just, it turns out that zero, one, two, three, four, like those dimensions, just enormous changes happen. If you have a model that spans, you know, many dimensions and how it can function, the really interesting stuff is usually one dimension is solvable, nothing interesting happens, two dimensions, it is, it takes like monumental achievements to sort of solve those problems potentially. You know, there's little models on, on two dimensions. Possibly, maybe you can solve it. It's a big deal if you can. You, they're easy to model, you know, because they're just in two dimensions. Interesting things happen. And then three dimensions, super hard. Like things get super hard. And then weirdly, for much high, depends on the system, but four or five, maybe, you know, 10 dimensions higher, it's all simple. It gets easy again because it's so connected by that time. That it becomes much more like random mixing. The dimensional stuff doesn't matter. So we're in a really, this, you know, we live in two and three dimensions a lot, and it's a hard place to, for things to happen. So the two dimensions is not you can't really move around that well. Three dimension you, you start to you know be able to move things, but it's still stuck relative to higher dimensional ones. So, but if you think about that random walker in two dimensions now, right? They can start to go this way, and just that very first part, there are four places to go. And there's uh, that second time step, only a quarter of them will come back to the origin, right? So it was a half before you went whoop, and then back to here, half of them get, but this one goes here, quarter of a chance it comes back. This one goes here, quarter of a chance it comes back. So that you talk about escape probability. What's the escape probability? 
Okay, reasons for caring. Um, so we're going to find a parallel size distribution with an interesting exponent. That's what's going to happen for this thing. And some physical structures, I mean, you mentioned this, but some physical structures I said alluded to before for natural um, basin shapes, for example, have some sort of random walk shapes. Uh, and then, and then depending on how we go, I might talk about how different scaling relations uh, might might appear. So round walks in 1D. So we're going to set up this problem. Here's a, a smaller example, right? We had 10,000. This is a smaller example. So just 20 time steps. So in this case, uh, we've got a first return here, right? After eight time steps. So we'd say that. But we might want to say, no, no, no. We want to find all the ones that, you know, first return at some point. All right. As we said, it can only happen at an even number. Um, we've got 8, 10, and then again at 14. So this, you know, if we're thinking about all the ones that return at 14, this would be a possible candidate, but it's already come back. So we'd have to exclude it. And so we'll write it like this. This is an FR for first return. So this is a probability that we have a first return, that random walk first returns after two n time steps. It's going to be a counting problem. Counting and probability are the same thing. We'll just normalize it. At, I mean, a little rough to say it, but basically, you know, we can go between them nicely, I think. And we're going to turn this problem into an easier return problem. Like I said, it's easy to figure out, not easy, but you know, the total number of walks that come back at 14, regardless of their history, we, we've got that already. That's a Gaussian. Okay, so we can simplify things a little bit. Let's, well, it doesn't matter which way they go to start with. So we'll imagine they go plus one to start with. So this is an example that comes back at 16. You know, it's some close moments, but it didn't, um, it, it, it's doing what we want. And of course, you know, if you're kind of there in history and you're running along, once you get to this point, you know, and you, you're looking for the ones that end at 16, you know that the next, these next three have to be, um, Four have to be tails, minus one. Okay, so we're going to have this, um, that it can't get to zero, right? So it's it's able to hit this one, of course. There's no problem with that. So it has to be at least, it's a bit different to being, um, this is a bit of a different, a slightly different problem because this problem was it can't come back to zero. This one is it can come back to where you started. That's fine. So if we sort of just think of this problem, that's also part of it, right? This is sort of a subset. And we can just add these pieces on at the end. So now we have a bit of a different problem. It's allowed to come back to the, if we think of this as the origin here, it's allowed to come back, but not cross it, which, you know, may or may not help, but that's the idea. Okay. All right, so we can, we can, um, this is just writing out this thing here so that now we want, uh, the number of walks that stay above but return to the origin, right? So this is greater than or equal to 1. T is between 1 and 2n minus 1. So it's just writing it out. And it has these start and end points. And then we, we're going to have a couple of pieces here. So there's um, uh, there are two walks, right? There's, there's this one. There's the mirror of this where we went minus 1. So we need that one as well. And then we have to be just a little careful at the end because we need, we've only gotten to here and we need that last walk, that last step to go back to the origin. So this two is for the, the mirror and then this half is to make sure that the last step gets you back to the origin. So they're just little cleanups. Okay. Words. All right. So we're going to count the number of walks and we'll get back to probably later on. So we had this before, right? So if we start at I, end at J, and we take T time steps, that's just our notation for the number of walks. So we'll be able to use that again. Okay. So we're going to think of all passes. Start at one, end at one. Just think of all of them. Right? That's what we had before. Okay. Lots of words. So we're going to think of all the all the possible paths. Uh, so if we can, if we can start with that, and then figure out. A way so we, we can either do it this way we can count all the paths that you know just bounce off one or we could count all of the possible paths and then subtract the bad ones that's the idea so this is called a sort of a, a mirror method so we're going to subtract the bad ones and i'll try to show that 
um, picture. There's the excluded walks. Okay, so it's a method of images. I think it's better to just look at this picture here. Okay, so um, here's a bad one, right? It starts at one, ends at one, right? This is a subset of what we had before. It's fine, it's fine, but it did a bad thing here. This one also did a bad thing here. It went below, went, yeah, below one, so it went all the way back, ends here as well. So these are, these are walks we'd like to remove, right? We want to count all the walks go from here to here and then remove the bad ones. And so the clever thing is that we can see that these bad ones have a mirror version, a partially mirrored version that starts at minus one and ends at one. So the game is gonna be this. If you have a bad walk, when it gets to zero for the first time, flip that part and make this new blue walk here. And we'll do that here. Flip this first part and then it tracks the rest of the way. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between walks that start at minus one and end at one and the bad walks. So we'll kind of go back the other way. So if we st so, so start the other way, we're gonna say, let's look at this blue walk first. It starts at minus one, ends at one. When it first hits zero, we're gonna flip that part up and we'll make this walk, which is a bad one. And we'll do the same here. We'll start with the blue one, flip this first part up when it first hits zero. And even though it goes below zero here, we don't mind. We make this black walk here. That is um, a bad one. We want to exclude it. So the observation we're making here is that all of these bad walks that start at one and end at one, but have gone below one, have a corresponding walk that starts at minus one and one. And you have to think about a little bit that we're not overcounting or undercounting, that they're the same. There's a one-to-one -one mapping between them. So once we've done this, it becomes a clever thing. Um, yes, these are the words. These are the words. I'll just leave these words here. And I can come back to this picture if we want. So we have the notation, the number of walks that take after t time steps start at minus one and ended at one. Then we're just going to write that notation. Um, so the number that first return after two and nine time steps is going to be the number that start at one, and we have to be a little careful of things. Um, but it's the number that start at one, end at one, two n minus two time steps because we're in B here. And we've you know, done this little adjustment for the endpoints. Minus the number, it's, I know this is down the bottom, start at minus one and end at one. Right, so again, it's just the number of all possible walks that start at one and end at one, and the number of all possible walks that start at minus one and one. They both follow these kind of Gaussian distribution things. So, that's the game. These are binomials, which is something you figure out. So we can put binomials in there, group them together. So we have factorials times factorials over factorials. And then we can look at the limits of those factorials. And from that, you get a rather remarkably a power law size distribution. How are we doing with this top figure thing? There are words here, but that's the idea is all in those two figures. And so a good walk, let's say this is a good walk, maybe it goes like this. There, it, you can't make it out of one of these, right? That doesn't exist. Right, because any good walk doesn't go below here and can't cross the origin. So you, this one has to cross the origin somewhere between minus one and one. Right, it has to cross the origin. So we will never... We'll never count like a good walk and subtract that out using this. We're only capturing the bad ones. So you want to look back and forth. Okay. So you play around with that and you get the number of walks scales like this. This is a bit of a funny looking thing. Um, we're going to have our root 2 pi. There's an n to the 3 halves here. This is a counting piece at the top. This is 2 to the power of 2n. It's number, right? So the number of walks is expanding. And if we normalize it, there are, right, at, at every time step, you have two more possible walks from what you had before. So it's two to the two n. If you divide through, divide through, divide through, then you get this rather lovely thing, which is, I'm gonna group some pieces together, the two to the power of two n, that cancels here. This is still a two to the minus three halves, and I'll put that with this n here. So now it's two n minus three halves, and then a one over root two pi. So this is a really fun, this is, this is the big result. I mean, we had a 
2N, we could call it an X or something like that. We have to be a little careful with normalization. But this is a power law size distribution. So this is a probability of returning after 2N time steps for the first time decays like this thing. So this is our, okay, so you can get to this. Um, and so, which is essentially T to the minus three halves. And that puts us in this bucket. So it's gamma equals three halves to use that, you know, this, this is the notation we've been using. And it, you get the same thing if you did continuous walks and messed around with in different kinds of ways, basically the same thing. So it's normalizable, right? Because this is T to the minus three halves. T to the minus one is the limit, right? That's when you get a log and it explodes. It's normalizable. The exponent is between one and two which means what? This is an infinite system. Yeah, so close, right. There's infinite variance. It's between, so that's true for between, gamma's, gamma's between two and three. So now gamma's between one and two. So the, the slope is, it's actually, there's a bigger tail. So you just have to toggle the mean. The mean is infinite. Yeah, the mean is infinite. So this is a pretty insane thing. I mean, it's just random walks, right? But the mean, this, this is a situation where, and I've got it written here. So we have recurrence. A random walk will always come back. So you're playing a game. You know, eventually you'll get back to even Stevens, as it were. I don't know what the origin of that is. But, um... But there's Stephen Colbert and yeah. Anyway, so, but all of these things are infinite, right? The mean, the variance, all the higher order moments are infinite. And, and yeah, we're not worried about this. As soon as a mean is infinite for these things, it triggers, the, the, it means that the rest are all infinite. Usually between two and three is that case where the variance is infinite. This is all infinite. There's a finite mean. But we've stepped into this more, much more insane kind of space, which is... Uh, Total explosion. So the walker will definitely come back, right? The walker will, if you set one of these off or you set a, a zillion off or a continuum off, they will come back. But you will have to wait an infinite amount of time on average, which is pretty nuts. So gambling is bad, is sort of what I'm going to say here. Um, yeah. Higher dimensions, these are really profound Again, these are these are kind of what I was alluding to before. Really becomes really hard. I mean, this is, you know, this is hard enough, but this is super hard. This is a messy business. You also get that it comes back, right? The walker will always come back. So that's a, it's obviously infinite time as well, right? On average, but you, this is this much looser situation. So even though, and now they're kind of, they're wandering around here, want, you know, they, they can get away further and further and further. Three dimensions, now you have, a non-zero prob probability that, that you'll never see them again. And, and then that's true for higher and higher. And you can estimate the actual, right? So you have some uh, distribution of them that you let go and they all start walking off. They're starting to come back, starting to come back. There's some fraction you'll never see again. Well, that'll come back later actually, but yeah. yeah yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of nonsense with um, things like, we'll, we'll come back to that, because the person who came up with that is a terrible person. Anyway, so, um, and was having a go at Zip, who may have been a terrible, was, was a terrible, oh, they're all terrible. It was obviously a terrible person as well, but it was like sort of slandering Zip, saying this is not interesting, right? But there are still papers being published now and then that says, that stuff is, ma anyway, so, but, you know, you can find, like, like saying, like, Pi has Shakespeare in it probably or something, right? If you want to, you know, that they're a rash, if you go far enough for things that are random, you'll find everything. But it's meaningless, of course, right? You, you're not going to get there. But it sounds, it sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, right. So, I mean, isn't that the, the Library of Babel, right? Um, Borges, right? I mean, the hex, hex, hexagon, yeah. Hexagonal rooms. And I don't think they're all, it's all just, they're, they're all, they're all kind of random. 
So there are slight variations potentially. You could find, you know, Romeo and Juliet, like, uh, but inside some book, but with one error in it or something. I mean, in principle, it's just a total mess. I think there are symbols everywhere. Uh, okay, so so these are kind of these, you know, poly errors. The, the the sort of G. I think, you know, it's a it's a dangerous word, but I think this is probably true here. <laughs> Terrible word. Um, maybe I should just delete it. I'll just put human. That'd be better. Okay, so. All right, so this is a this is a um, human. All right. Okay. So if we just had finite spaces, which I don't know the thing you were talking about, maybe you know that's a different game. If you have finite spaces, let's say you've got this grid at the back here, right? And we set up a little random walker here. Let them walk around. Um, or we set up a whole pile of them. That's a different game. It's finite, and eventually. You know, if they bounce off the walls here, eventually the probability of finding them anywhere is uniform. And that's diffusion, right? So diffusion eventually flattens everything out. If and it's the question of whether the, we have a box that we're living in. So eventually, yeah, everything becomes equally probable. You get a, um, and, and so in, in the, uh, dynamical systems, we talk about the invariant density of a dynamical system, which of course is, you know, functioning in time and, and kind of temporal. But you can say, okay, let's sort of, collapse all of that in, in, you know, into the far future and like, where is this thing? You know, and I mean, we want that for like, where is the, you know, where is the climate in a hundred years? But, you know, what's the, what's the probably distribution for where that can be? If, you know, if it's something that can have this kind of behavior. Yeah, you know, we talk about ergodicity, you know, whether things can, every place can be explored, blah, blah, blah. Um, and of course you can get these very non-trivial ones. I shouldn't say, of course, this is a, a you know, huge, um, thing that was figured out in the 70s and 80s, that you get these really um, peculiar fractal-like invariant densities, right? Strange attractors and so on. On networks, really interesting, right? And this is a nice problem to figure out, um, which is if you set off a random walker on a finite network, then eventually, and it's just a bare network, right? So just the, they're just pipes. You imagine we've got hamsters in a habit trail, which if we had enough hamsters, maybe we could really model some things. Um, they're onto something for sure. So we've got this habit trail and there's a little, little spaces, you know, little, little balls to be in and the hamsters are all going between them. Eventually you let them run around. If they're behaving randomly, they'll all pile up proportional to the degree of the nodes of what, you know, these balls with all these sticks, all these little tubes going between them. Uh, and what's really happening though, is in fact, if you look along the tubes, they're actually they're actually evenly populating the tubes, right? So when we talk about in this space, these random walkers, you know, the grid on the back of this slide, the random walkers uniformly populating it, really in some sense, they're, they're, they're populating the edge space in a uniform way. And then, and of course you don't see that because the nodes and the edges are completely evenly balanced here. But when you step out to a network, now you have a quite different structure and the nodes, their local, their degree, degree is the number of edges coming out of them, right? Um, sorry if this is unclear. The, then uh, that's kind of like a local degree of the node. So networks behave like this multi-degree system, depending on what's, you know, the dynamical thing that's happening on it. But this is... This is a really kind of beautiful result. And yeah, so something like Google originally had structures like this doing this. Um, of course, other people thought of it as well. Uh, you sort of, yeah, search around on networks in a, in a you'll know how it will behave. Okay. I'll talk about this um, briefly just to cap it off because it does connect back to um, where we were when we were talking about boundaries of things. And I'll just, I'll, I'll have a little bit. So this is, this is a toy model. You don't really see it in the real world um, of, of random networks um, that was thought of in the context of geomorphology, right? So we see all these beautiful network structures. And this is from the 60s. People are trying to model these things. And it's still an open question, to be honest, I think. Uh, so there's been a few advances. Let's see. So uh, 
you could imagine this where this is a hexagonal or a triangle lattice in the background, and it, there's each node, you would make a little 50-50, so you flip a coin, and you make a little channel, like a little river network, going kind of left or right, this way. And so you do that everywhere, and then you know you stand back, and you've got a you've got these little river network structures, right? So this is like the divide between them. This might be a ridge, uh, and so on. And there's a this kind of basin-like structures. It's very it's obviously strongly directed. You could imagine on a very steep um, uh, slope having this kind of form, but it's just a toy model. What you what you see is that these are random walks here. Essentially, the edges of these basins are random walks. And then it becomes exactly this question of when do two random walks hit each other? How often does that happen? Like this, like boop, boop, like boop there. So they're tiny little basins. You know, and if you started, if you just started here, there's a tiny little basin. Uh, but if you start here, there's random walks, they're random walking, and then it clips it off, right? So we kind of have the same problem, and that will give us some, it will give us the, the, all these scaling laws, which are associated with landscapes, which is, you know, for example, if you just stand at some random point, what's the basin that you're in? How big is that basin? And how big is the stream? Like if you started walking up the main stream from there, how big would it be? And what, how do these things then fit together? So this is the same idea, as I said, right? So it's going to be, instead of this uh, random walk thing, there's now, because we're going to subtract one random walk from the other, so sometimes we subtract them when they're pointing the same direction or this direction. If they're pointing away from each other, then we get a plus one. If they're pointing together, we get a minus one. So half the time we, we have nothing happen. And we're just, again, two random walks, subtracting one from the other. So it's the same kind of game. It's a first re return problem. And that means that basin lengths follow this kind of same distribution, right? So if you just jump into this toy model and say, how, what's the probability that I'm in a basin that has a, a length, this longitudinal length of L, it's, it's this extreme thing again. Now, it's random walks, it's not exactly what happens in the real world, but you actually see uh, the, the, a number of scalings all match up. They all connect with each other in the same way. So this is the notation, it's L to the minus gamma. Um, and you can just play around, you can do some very simple things, right? So we also know this from what we've just done, that the typical width is going to be L to the half, right? That's that standard deviation, right? So we're, we're thinking about that round works. The typical width of this thing was going to be L to the half. Um, <clears throat> that's like the T to the half thing. So basin area is, is A times, you know, this is very rough. It's the length of the basin times L to the half. So it's L to the three halves. And I'll just finish with this. And we can invert this and then we have the, the, a relationship between the length and the area. If you do a little um, transformation of variables, and so we'll do some more of this, but we have to do DL, DA, right? So we're going to put this A in here. It's just a differentiation, two thirds, A to the minus a third DA. Then we can make this transformation to find out what the probability of area is like. So we have area and length are connected, simple way. So we're just going to put this in here. This is L to the minus three halves DL. That's what we had before. And then we're going to place the L by the A to the two thirds, bloop. And then this uh, differential, don't worry about this. This is a to the minus thirds dA. And you put these things together, clean them up. That's really a to the minus one. We get a to the minus four thirds. Okay, so we'll finish with this. But this, the point here is that now we've got a, another scale, another parallel size distribution. This is for area, right? So you've dropped into a, a, a landscape, could be you know anywhere in the world, and say, what's the probability that the area of the basin that I'm seeing scales like this? And this is minus four thirds, you know, 1.3, right? So this is, um, there's a Leroy Jenkins reference there. This is um, A to the, so it's, it's even closer to one. This is a very extreme parallel size distribution. Of course, it's you know, the shape of the earth, blah, blah, blah. But this A to the minus tau and the way this fits with this, uh, the length and the area, the way they fit together, have a very nice scaling or story. I'll talk a little bit more about that on Thursday. But the idea is, once we get an anchor of one power, you know, one power law size distribution or one kind of scaling in a system, often we can connect it to many others. Um, and usually that happens decades into thinking about something. Okay, but the big story is, yeah, don't gamble. And um, you're gonna play around with some uh, binomials and factorials and Sterling's approximation.
which is awesome. Okay, which I first heard about from a friend of mine in college whose father was a professor, which was a very unknown concept to me, right? So I'm a first-gen type person, and I just couldn't believe it. He told us the answer to something about, anyway. All right, okay. I want to pass that on to you. On the previous slide, um, can you explain how the difference between the original hospital and plus and minus one and minus two? Yeah, plus and minus two, you just normalize it. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, like, what are the differences between the original hospital and the plus and minus one and minus two? So it's a, got a sort of probabilistic pause in it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, people.